So listen, there are 82 people joining the call and uh, we are so grateful for you all taking the time today to join us. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope you're all staying healthy mentally and physically. I hope you're all following instructions to isolate and I hope you're all managing to keep some perspective in uh, these strange and scary times. So uh, one thing I'm a big believer in is the power of community. And it's just great to see so many faces and leverage this awesome technology to get together and keep some sense of community going through, um, through these times. I have some thanks. I want to thank Darren Newland and Aaron Petershik. They are amazing people here in Seattle who have created this community called the Learner Palooza community. And I'm a huge fan of this community. It's practitioners doing learning work and learning leadership in the Puget Sound area. And I just love the energy and the passion that they can kind of distill when they get people together. So we'll, we'll hear from Darren later on, but uh, I know a lot of you, of you have come from your affiliation with that organization. So go learn a palooza. Second thanks are uh, to uh, Redfin and Karen uh, Dowdell Sandford, who's gonna be on our panel later on. She very kindly, uh, without knowing anyone at Mandel or knowing me, offered an amazing facility for us to have a community event, the community event we're doing today. Um, it's a beautiful facility in their brand new offices in downtown Seattle. For those of you who don't know, Redfin is a digital real estate agency and it's a company that's really on fire here in the Seattle area. And they had a lovely space where we were all supposed to be now drinking coffee and sharing stories together, um, but very, very gracious hosts. And so I want to say thank you to them. Uh, third, I want to say thank you to Mandel Corporation idea that we had here was Mandela are a sponsor of the Learner Palooza event in the summer and they'd offered to come to Seattle, get a group of people together sort of mid-winter and uh, invest in the learning community. Basically a shoemaker's children type story, let's skill up ourselves for a change and uh, we plan to do this half-day event at Redfin uh, with uh, Mandel sharing really their wisdom and their smarts and giving us a sample of what they do for a living, which is make great communicators. Um, of course, uh, we had to pivot like everyone's having to pivot. And it turns out that not only do they do great workshops in person, but they also have a pretty sophisticated set of online offerings as well. And we can all be grateful for that. So uh, Mandel uh, and team, you're going to meet some of the team today. Um, amazing support of this community and uh, like everybody else, uh, figuring out how to pivot uh, in these strange times. Um, let me see. I think that's all the thanks I wanted to do. Let me uh, go to the next slide and just talk about the flow of the event. Um, we are going to going next to the actual training session, uh, the kind of meat of, of the session. And again, brought to you by Mandel in the spirit of uh, investing in you for a change uh, and helping you get trained for a change. Uh, then we're gonna have a short break uh, for bio break and coffee and whatnot. And then we're gonna have a panel discussion. I've got a really fantastic group of people who've agreed to share their philosophies and their, the actions they're taking um, at the moment. So we're gonna have a discussion with a panel and I really wanna have a broad Q and A discussion. Uh, I've never done this before on the, on the, on the Zoom platform but I really wanna hear from all of you on what you've seen going on, uh, what resources you're looking at, um, and, and uh, just connect, let's connect as best we can through this format. Um, unfortunately, we can't buy you lunch, which was the original plan, and, um, but we'll try and figure that out. At some point in the future, we'll do, this, we'll do this in person. Two last things that I wanted to say. One was, when we moved online, we moved away from our constraint of having just 50 people, which was the space we had uh, in the room. And so, as you can see, we've got 86 people online, over 120 people have registered. Um, we'll make the recording available. So there's kind of one lesson learned there is there, there are trade-offs, of course, but there are also benefits uh, of delivering in this modality. So uh, that's, that's that. And then last but not least, for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Chris Peary. Uh, I am... Uh, 
ex-learning leader at Microsoft and at Oracle and at ATD, at the Association of uh, Training and Development. Uh, I now run my own business based here in Seattle and uh, do some research and a podcast called Learning is the New Working. Go check it out. Uh, and um, I'm going to be hosting this uh, panel discussion later today. And um, again, thanks to everyone who made it possible. And thanks to all of you for taking the time and, uh, and being a part of the community. So I'm going to hand over to uh, Brad. Brad Holst is the Principal and Executive Director of Communication Strategy and Innovation at Mandel Corporation. He's designed many, many, many of the assets and tools that Mandel bring uh, to the challenge of helping people be great communicators. Uh, he's a passionate and very, very busy executive coach as well. Uh, and he teaches these methodologies all around the world. He's written and contributed articles to Harvard Business Review, to Harvard Managed Mentors video series, and to the Training Industry Magazine. He lives in one of my favorite parts of the world, the San Francisco Bay Area, with his family and his Labradors. And the little known fact about Brad is he is a former Disneyland Jungle Cruise skipper. So if things get out of hand on this call, I'm pretty sure he'll know what to do. Um, I am going to hit mute and I'm going to uh, learn from Brad and uh, thanks again everyone for joining us. Uh, I'll see you uh, uh, I'll see you in a little bit of time. Hey, thank you, Chris. And thank you so much, Chris, for your leadership and making this event happen. We couldn't have done this without you. And thank you to everyone who took time out of your day to join us, both in the Puget Sound area, as well as people from all over the, the country, literally, that have had a chance to drop in today. You know, there was a 2017 study that suggested, uh, based on their research, that we spend more than half of our work day actively communicating. Not a surprise. And that same study went on to say that 15% of that time is wasted due to inefficient, ineffective communication. And what's the cost of that? Well, if you saw the study, it works out to about $11,000 per employee per year, or if you've got 5,000 people in your organization, a $5 million productivity opportunity. But the impact on an organization is even bigger than that. You know, if you look at the lower right of the slide, there's a number of ways this can hurt you. I mean, what's the cost when a salesperson is out communicated by a competitor? What happens when employees aren't able to communicate innovative ideas in a way that other people understand them and hear them? And in times of urgent opportunity or crisis, like we're in today, you know, the cost can be really slowing down our response to change unless our messaging, our communications are really clear, really concise, and very compelling. Now more than ever, you know, your employees need the skills required to consistently be heard. And this isn't new to the learning co community at all. The fact that success or failure in business, success or failure in a career, oftentimes depends on how effectively an employee is able to communicate in high stakes business situations. You know, these include situations like the ones on this slide and take a moment and look at those. I mean, real quickly, just a, a, a yes on the chat panel. How many of you can relate to at least 10 of the things in your world that's on this list? And then think what's not on the list. Your list might actually be longer than that. But how do these situations play out in real life? Well, if we think about it, there's you, there's that need to be heard, and there's that listener, which could be one, it could be many that you need to influence. And you need to think about where does success come from? Where, where do you decide whether you're going to be effective with your communications? Do you decide that? Well, you can influence that. But it's the listener that ultimately decides whether or not you're effective. So that's why we look at these high-stake communication situations. We really call them a moment of truth. And in that moment of truth, there's literally three things you need to make happen for the people or the person you're trying to influence. One, they simply need to understand what it is you're saying. 
and you think about it right now in this session today, look at all the digital distractions you have at your fingertips. If for whatever reason I'm not holding your attention, you have so many other things you could be doing right now. People check out almost immediately. And of course, they even check out when we're face to face. It's amazing, live meetings, people go to their phones. So one, you need to be easy to understand. But that's just table stakes, because if people understand you, they're immediately looking, where's the value in what you're communicating? Where's the value to my organization? Where's the value to me? And have you ever been in a situation where someone's trying to influence you and you understand, and if what they're saying is true, you see value, but you're just going, huh, I don't know. Because there's one more thing, one more thing. You've got to trust. Understand, see value, trust. And I want you to think for a moment how quickly we start making decisions about things like this. Is it measured in days? Is it measured in hours? Is it measured in minutes? And I'm guessing all of you would probably know, yes, Aaron, thank you. It's measured in seconds. You know, I love how Malcolm Gladwell spells this out in blank, how quickly we make decisions on it. So this decision starts being made literally in the few, few seconds of the communication. And that's why if we looked at an underlying theme for what we're going to be talking about today, you know, the theme could be moment of truth readiness. And with that spirit in mind, let's take a look at the agenda for the, about the next 30 minutes. You know, our goal today, if you're looking at the slide, on the topic of communicating change, it's not only to illustrate the skills and the tools you need to effectively communicate change, but in this short amount of time, and by the way, we thought we had 90 minutes in Seattle. I'm just blessed to have 30 minutes a day. And in that short amount of time, I want you to give you a personal experience with this. I invite you to play along. I want you to take it for a test drive, actively participate. And if you do, and, and of course, if you like what you did, that's very important, you'll be able to immediately apply what we share with you today back on the job to help drive change in your world. And by the way, if you have any questions, Diane Y mentioned it before, please type them in the chat panel. We've got the fabulous Diane Burgess Faber, Faber you know, my, well, I have a lot of favorite people at Mandel, but she's one of my very favorites, and I know she's very active in the Learnapalooza uh, community. So know when you're typing a question, Diane is going to be typing away. And thanks for that little hi there, Di. Also in chat, if you haven't downloaded it already, uh, I know we talked about it at the beginning, is you may want to download this tool we call it a personal communication framework. You may even, if you have a printer handy, print out a copy. It's an e-tool, but just print one out so you can refer to it, or have it up somewhere you know, on your desktop where you can use it, because we're going to be actively using this particular tool. And one more thing you should know about what we're going to do today. What we're going to share works around the world. You know, if you look at the stars, that isn't the number of Mandel trainers, but those are geographic areas we have Mandel trainers. So we're doing this work in Asia, South America, Europe, North America, Latin America, and with appropriate cultural adaptations, as you would expect, everything we're working on here works around the world. So let's dive in. Let's get to this. And let's start with the all-important thinking about what the listener, what the people you're trying to influence to change, what they're thinking about. And we all know these are not normal times. You know, we're in a time where massive global chain ha change has been thrust upon us. And I, I've always been a fan of this Darwin quote, or at least it was attributed to him. It's, it's not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent. It's the one that's most adaptable to change. And I want you to think for a moment, so what do your employees, the people that you're trying to influence a change, what is it they care about in this world of COVID-19? And you know where my head goes? It goes back to Abraham Maslow, Psych 101, and Hierarchy of Needs. You know, I'm sure you're all familiar with this pyramid. Where do you think most people are living right now and trying to work? Well, I can tell you in the Bay Area where we've been in lockdown for a while, and by the way, I'm not in an office. I am so missing getting out to client sites that I put up a green screen <laughs> and put up an office background just so I feel like I'm working. 
I'm, I'm, I'm really missing all that fun of being out with client sites and working with them. So I turned my op, home office into one. But at the Bay Area, you know, we're living at survival. Oh, my God, don't have enough toilet paper. Got to go buy everything Costco has. Got to buy a month's worth of food. And then once we get that covered, we're in the security and we're kind of bouncing back and forth. And think about what that impact has on engagement. Well, it's not good. Not this week. It could change for the better as we adapt and get used to whatever the new normal is. But it's not good right now. So how do you communicate change when your listener is bouncing back and forth between survival and security? Well, first let's take a look at what not to do. And that's send out a what message without even thinking about the needs of your people. And what I mean by that is here's what I need you to do. And why do we do this even though we know it's probably not effective? Well, we're all busy. We're all under pressure. We just want to get it done. But think about why this isn't a good way to influence change, especially in times like today. What's missing? It's the why. Why do I need to do this? That why needs to be linked to the things that the listeners care about. In, in other words, you've got to sell the problem first. If you can sell the problem on opportunity, people want to buy whatever you're suggesting. And I, I, not saying that in the sales world, we're all buying and selling. And what else is missing for this message? What's in it for me? What's the value to me and my organization? So typically when we get in this fast paced, just trying to adapt to change, it's what message is all over the place when the listener really wants a why and a with them. All three components are mission critical. If you want to successfully influence others to change, you have to do it not just with logic, but also with empathy. Empathy works. And when you have a good listener-centered why and a good listener-centered with them, empathy. And all of us human beings, were hardwired for it. It doesn't cost anything. Actually, it only costs something if we forget to use it. Then it can be very expensive. And what we're going to do is look at a, a globally proven personal communication framework, the one you all downed, downloaded, that makes it really easy to ensure that you consistently communicate the why, the what, and the whiffing, the what's in it for me when you're trying to influence others to action. And it's more important today than ever. So when we think about creating high-value messages, let's first acknowledge the challenge that you're all up against. How many of you have really easy things to do in your job and deal with really simple topics that have really obvious answers, and it's really easy to craft clear communications? I'm guessing that would be no one. Absolutely no one. We all live in a very complicated world, and it makes it really hard to crisp to c construct crisp, clear messages on that. And the way we approach that, if you can't have clarity of thinking, there's not going to be clear, any clarity in your communication. So that's where this personal communication framework comes up and what our users love about this. And just curious, how many people on the call are familiar with our SCI PAB? So if you just again uh, raise your hand real quickly, let us see that. And it looks like a lot of you are. Becky's a big fan. Thank you, Becky. Been using it for over 10 years. God, this stuff melts my heart. Thank you. Uh, but what our users like about it is how efficient it is. In one simple process, you are going to analyze the communication situations and the world of the listeners that you're trying to influence, and it forces you to do that. You're going to organize a message. So you're going to get all those complex thoughts in a nice, concise, clear way and ultimately have a way to verbalize that message. All in one process, all in one tool. Easy peasy. And when we break it down, and I want to look at each piece of this. So we're going to do a couple things here. We're going to, one, I'm going to give a high level overview. Then I'm going to give you a, a little more detail on it with an example. And I'm going to ask you to create your own SCI PAB for a listener or listeners that you need to influence right now. Do something real on it. So I'm going to invite you to do that. I'll give you a little bit of work time where you can work as we go through it. But one of the first things you want to look at is on the left-hand side of the tool, you want to be looking, okay, what's my topic? Who's my audience? Real clear on that. But then you need to be laser focused on what the intention is of this communication. What is it that you want to achieve? 
And some people, if it's too broad, if it's too ill-defined, so is your communication. What is it I want to achieve? What do I want people to do as a result of that? And then the bottom one, very important, just a little thought about the people I'm trying to influence, what are their needs? What's going on in their world as it relates to my topic? And you don't even need to write this down as long as you're thinking about it. Then you're set up to start putting together your story. And if you look at the top line, SCI, Situation, Complication, Implication, that answers that all-important why question. So we start with why. Then the next level, PAB, Position, Action, Benefit, that's where we address the what. What do you want people to do? And what's the with them? What's in it for them? SCI, PAB. And then if you look at the bottom, since SCI, PAB is most often a one to two minute, very high level message, it's your core story, it's your thesis, it anchors this, but there's probably more discussion that needs to happen. What's your agenda for that? And then at the bottom, you can plan out what are the top three points I want to make sure we cover so people end up realizing this is a good idea. And it's three item agenda, three point agenda. Not that you should never go to four or occasionally might need to even go to five, but whenever possible, try to stick to three. And I, I, I could go on for the next 15 minutes about the power of three. Just Google rule of three to communications, and it's what we remember, it's what we process, it's established patterns, one, two, three. But let's, let's jump into this even further. This is, this is your turn now. So I'm going to do a deeper dive into each one of these and give you an example. And I would like you, either on the tool on your device you're using, or if you printed it out, maybe you could sketch on it. If you have Post-it notes, we love Post-it notes at Mandel. makes it really easy to brainstorm. Or even if you just want to do this, if you, you take a piece of paper and put six boxes on it. But I really want you to actually apply this as we're going through it so you really get a feel how this works. So think about that important idea you need to communicate. Envision the listener or listeners. I mean, really envision, not a faceless group of employees, but who is it you're trying to influence? And then use that tool to create your message. So if we look at that top line, the SCI, this is the why. My experience, this is where most messaging that's intended to influence other fails, is the failure to articulate the why or a compelling why. So we want to start with a top of mind issue. It's kind of the once upon a time in your story, an important issue. You want heads to nod. It's kind of like this morning when I said half of your day is spent communicating, three hours in real time, hour and a half on email. Okay? The complication is where tension starts rising. A good story needs tension. Change, we need tension. We need something to do that. So in the complication, we talk about a change, a problem, an opportunity that's arisen. So for example, if we spend half our day communicating, uh, the, the complication here is that 15% of our time is lost due to ineffective, inefficient communication. Okay, so you carry this through, that's a, that's a problem. So what's the impact? What's the implication? What's the so what for the listener? Well, it means in your organization, the annual cost is about 11,000 per employee, much more depending on the role that can be on it. And on top of that, good ideas oftentimes fail in that environment. So you see the flow there? It's very self-serving. It's essentially the SCI I used to open up the session. But we're trying to create that type of arc going into it. And so what I would invite you to do is to one, look at these what we call transition phrases. I'm gonna leave them up here for you in just a moment. These not only help you articulate an SCI, like currently, and then the challenges, and this will impact. I mean, you, good transition words make it easier to process, but it helps you think. If you think to yourself about your topic, as you know, that's a good situation statement. If you think what the challenge is, that's probably a good complication. So I find these really help people put this together. And I, we will make a version of the slides available. I see people asking about that. We will make sure that something goes out on that. But here's what I want you to try right now. And again, whether you're working on a piece of paper with six boxes, whether you're working on your device using the actual tool, or you've printed it, I would like you to, again, think about that issue you need to communicate, the listeners you need to influence, and create the SCI. And you're not writing a script. You just should be triggering, writing some trigger words that capture your thoughts. It's a very high level outline or storyboard. 
Again, you can see the transition phrases below. You can see the definitions here. Let me give you a couple minutes just to put together an SEI. And if you've got a question, put it in chat. Diane and I will be actively looking at it. So has somebody completed their SEI that would be willing to volunteer to share it? Or I should say the way I very positively could put this is would you like to be coached in front of 80 of your best friends? Hi, this is Andrea. Andrea! Where, where, where's home, Andrea? Seattle. Seattle, excellent. I'm in the mm -hmm. Bay Area. Feels like QVC right now. We're having this little pitter-patter, <laughs> and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to sell you a communication tool as we get into it. But could you just – and thank you for volunteering. Can you just tell me what your topic is and the audience for it is and, and what you're trying to achieve? Don't share your message yet. Just give us what's your topic, who's your audience, mm -hmm. and what is it you're trying to achieve? What's your intent? Okay, my topic is a request to – and in the audience, a group of uh, – of engineers that I held a session, a learning session this morning. And what is it you hope to achieve with them? What, what is it that you want to, what's your intention for having this communication? Mm -hmm. The request is for them to join uh, an accountability team following okay. the session. So if it goes well, they're going to want to join this accountability team. So group, you've all heard her background situation. And then if you could, Andrea, don't worry about trying to present this in a conversational way right now. All we want to do is kind of hear your thinking. So literally you could say, take a pause, look at your situation and say, the situation is, and then pause, the complication is. So could you just walk us through the SCI. Okay. Well, um, I wrote, today was our first session because I'm holding five. So today was our first session and the follow-up request was to join our team accountability group um, because this will mean that you are um, you are connected. So I didn't finish. Uh, this is where I thought that this will mean that um, you will hold each other accountability and you will practice the exercise that uh, I shared in the session. Okay. So let's go back and look at it again. What is just the situation? Give us the situation one more time. Mm, today was our session. Okay. And that's a classic situation statement and kind of heads are nodding. And mm -hmm. I might say a little bit more. What's the session about? Just today's our session about? Today was our session about uh, teamwork, building about teamwork. teams. Mm -hmm. And then what was your complication? Let's hear that just all by itself. Um, following up on a request that I made to the uh, participants to join an accountability group. Okay. And let me ask you, let me, let's think about that complication because that sounds mm -hmm. more almost you than about them. So what okay. – what, what is a comp, why is this accountability group needed? What is a problem or opportunity that's going on right now that's created the need for that? Mm -hmm. So I'll go with the opportunity, not a problem. The opportunity okay. is that they have uh, received new learning information, new knowledge, and the opportunity is to practice it, to turn it into a skill. Okay. Practice. And if they don't practice it, what happens? Um, they will forget it and won't enter in their school sign. Okay, and so that's where if I was thinking about your SEI, okay. I'd talk about today we're having that meeting, and I, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll just I'll just going to mm -hmm. do a very high level. Today we're having that meeting. This is you know it's it, it's really critically that we practice these skills because if we don't, we're just going to forget about them. So that's just kind of you think about that SEI arc. You want mm -hmm. to throw it back on the listeners. And I did that very high level. You probably have a little bit more on that. But does that help you kind of think about how you want to position the problem or opportunity for them? Yes, thank you. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. And I would love to do this with everybody, except I'm watching the clock tick down, and we're all virtual here. But, I, Andrea, I really want to say thank you for sharing. Can you hear the deafening virtual applause from all, your, <laughs> all the other people on that? But thank you so much for doing that. You're welcome. And let's, Thank you. let's continue working through this. And I think the SCI is by far the hardest and the most important part of the message to put together. And remember, it's about the listener. Now, take a minute and complete your position action benefit. 
So again, the position, this is our recommendation. This is our point of view. This is our idea. This is at a, at a 10,000 meter level. We're, we're, if there's one piece of that where we're trying to solve something, it is the position. So for example, against that communication problem in the SCI, I'm going to recommend SCI PAB. It's efficient. It's effective. It works around the planet. The action is what I want the listener to do. Sometimes my position might be a big action, a big recommendation. Here's what I specifically want you to do, either during and after our talk. So in this case, I want you to learn it, and I want you to test it. Remember I said take it out for a test drive? And what's in it for you? What's the benefit? Well, if you'll do that, you'll find it's a quick way to boost productivity, accelerate the pace of business, and to share effectively good ideas. SCI, PAB. Take a minute, just jot down. There's some of the, the transition phrases. Take a moment and jot down your PAB, please. Again, you're not writing a novel. You want to keep it very high level, just trigger words like an outline. Some people are very visual, use pictures. And if we had more time and we're able to really do this in, in our true virtual classroom experiences, we would be breaking you out in twos and threes with very structured how to deliver your SEI PAB, how to coach that PAB. And it usually happens once you've said something out loud two, maybe three times, that's when you know do you have a good message or not. You don't know what you have until you say it out loud. Just hearing Andrea share her SCI, so helpful for both of this. Now in terms of timing here, I'm not going to have you share your PAB. We find this is much more straightforward. Just remember position might be a recommendation, an idea, something that requires a big action of many. The action is specific to the listener or listeners you're trying to influence. That's one of the things we get the most questions about on there. So let's just talk briefly about executive presence. Because if you've taken the time to, to create the message, you know, if people are going to understand, see value, and trust, that is not only the content, it's how you engage with the content. I would even offer that a, a email can have executive presence or not. You know, someone who organizes SCI PAB in an email, uses some bold, some white spaces, really kips a crisp, that message has presence, it gets read, versus a big block of text or too little information on that. But especially when we think about when we're having to articulate a message. And so here's our Maslow. The goal is to be real, come across as yourself. To do that, you have to be able to maintain composure under pressure. This is not a normal environment to me. I'd love to be face to face with you guys. It's so much easier here. But I have composure skills that help me function in this environment. Energy skills that help me transfer my conviction with the goal is I just want to be real. I just want to come across as my genuine authentic self. And I want you to look at these composure skills. Power of open posture, sustained eye contact, but very importantly, the power of pausing, and especially in this virtual world. You probably recognize one of the most famous sales pitches of the last 12 years, Steve Jobs introducing the iPhone, except you probably can't read this. No punctuation, no capitalization, no white space. And of course, he didn't write it. He delivered it. And would this be actually any better? This speaks to the needs, the power of pause. Because pausing for the speaker lives us that moment to be fully present. We can think and breathe. And for the listener, the people on the receiving end, it's the only punctuation we have in our spoken language. Let's talk briefly, again, if you're practicing your SIPAB, practice punctuating each one with pauses. Get the rhythm of the message. Energy skills, well, obviously, with my camera up, I can even do a little movement. Usually that's not a virtual thing, but gestures, vocal and facial animation. Even if webcams aren't up, in today's world they should be, come through in your voice. And again, if you just want to see the power of it, we call this nonverbal self-sabotage. And it's not like we consciously think this is bad, but unconsciously we don't trust. We don't find you confident. Compared to like the model for communication today, which is the TED Talk, 
this is infectious. Notice the open posture, the engagement in the face, everything on that. Do we want to be this people? Faces protected? Or these people? And I just want to touch on this because I want to wrap up here real quickly. But there is a wonderful app called Ori. There's a free version you can experiment with, App Store or Google Play. And it uses artificial intelligence that gives you instant feedback on things like if you want to get better at pausing, this tool will help you do it. Uh, so will our workshops too, by the way, virtually. I'm not about these two together, dynamite, absolutely dynamite. So this is something you may want to take a look at if you want to make progress in this area. And one more thing. Think about all the ways you can use SciPad. People, our users find out whether it's spoken or in writing. And just think about putting a SciPad in every e meeting invite so people know why and what we need to produce. Think about structuring your emails that way as well as in the spoken world. And with that, we've hit our three topic areas. I can't stress enough that starts with thinking about what's going on in your listeners' world then message into that, and when you have to grade, do it with your genuine, authentic presence. Uh, I'd like to invite you to come out to the Mandel website for a very specific reason. Uh, yeah, you can learn about all the things we're doing in terms of virtual development over whether it's digital or live virtual training like this, but I really want you to go to our Resources tab, because when you do, there's a wealth of free information. There's a number of videos. Some of them are the ones we've done together with Harvard. Our blog is heavily described, very practical, lots of useful tips on it. And we have a big library of white paper that are all there for you on that. Would I be willing to flash the completed document one more time? So there is the completed SCI PAB. Is that the one you're looking for? And I'm going to leave that up for a moment because I want to turn this back to Chris, our host with the most. Hey, Chris, I just want to thank you, and I want to thank everybody for letting me share this with you guys. And, and I know we've got this exciting panel coming up, but uh, thank you. Hey, Dan, the situation is I'm stuck at home. The challenge is that I'm a total extrovert. The implications are this is going to drive me and my family crazy. I think that events like this can really help. So I'd love people to share other ideas. And the benefit is we'll all get through this. How was that? Well this done. This is the new handshake. The new handshake. Bravo. Go Nicely Perry. done. <laughs> Good stuff. Nicely done. Um, thank you. Uh, Brad, it's really great. I mean, it's amazing to watch you uh, perform and bring this thing to life. There was lots of good comments in the chat room. Um, I, I so wish we were in person and we could get these interactive sessions going, but it is what it is. Um, and Chris, we can do that virtually, actually. If we have a smaller group and a little more time, we can do that virtually too. We can create a pretty cool experience with it. That's pretty cool too. I know that you also have like a cohort program that you run with uh, my friends in Seattle from uh, Intrepid, yeah. yeah. Is that, is that hey, a popular Di, option? Di, why don't you speak to that? You, you were the leader in, in, in terms of coming up with that amazing solution. Yes, online, it's semi-synchronous. We do, a facilitator goes through the experience with you. You learn uh, exactly what we, we taught today, uh, but at your own pace, but you're actually in a cohort. It's, it's a wonderful six hour experience that we spread over around three weeks. So we just know we need to meet, you know, all of our learners, all of our participants where they want to be, you know, sometimes it's online, sometimes it's small groups, sometimes it's cohorts of 150, sometimes it's virtual um, in whatever platform, and then I'm hoping once again we'll all be back together face to face. But we do try to, again, just meet our learners and, and all of our leaders um, where they need us to be. Cool. Thank you, Diane. So we are going to uh, honor our commitment to give you all a bio break um, at just before the top of the hour, let's say in five minutes time, uh, I'd love for you to hang on and uh, join the conversation. We've got these uh, wonderful four leaders from the Seattle area learning community who've agreed to be tortured and um, 
uh, get questions from me and uh, they've got interesting things to say and uh, I'd love for you to hear them. And then I promise you we've saved time for some open communication. I really, really, really want as many of you as possible to share what your current situation is and how, uh, what you're doing to, to, uh, to innovate and to respond to the constraints. So let's take a, a, a bathroom break and let's say at two minutes to, uh, to 11, we'll, we'll start with our panel discussion. Thanks again for Brad for uh, taking the time to give us the little Mandel mini lesson there. Powerful stuff, obviously, and uh, what an amazing online presenter uh, Brad is. Let's give him a virtual round of applause. Uh, I think that was a really, really great session. Uh, and I, I, wish, I just wish we could have more. Um, next, part of the com uh, next part of the session is to, have, uh, to meet some learning leaders from the Seattle area. Uh, this was originally very much a session about place. Uh, and uh, very much about Seattle. I have uh, a personal opinion that Seattle is and should be a center of excellence around the kind of work that we do. You know, when you look at the companies that are represented on this call, um, there are thousands of people in the learning and development practice in Seattle. And um, one of my sort of side projects is to try and build that community and build that reputation It'll help us all hire the best people. It'll help us all get to do interesting work. And the community is such a valuable asset under any circumstance. So um, I'd like to have each of these uh, four wonderful people introduce themselves. Um, I'm gonna ask them to give us their job title, uh, their role, and uh, uh, talk briefly about their organization and the primary kind of audiences that they deal with. So Chris, I'm gonna go to you first, Chris Schaefer. Great, thanks, Chris. Uh, we had a joke at Microsoft when Chris was there with me that to work in LND, you had to be named Chris or have your name legally changed to Chris. <laughs> so so we had so many Chris's. But hey, everybody, my name is Chris Schaefer, and uh, I do work at Microsoft. I uh, next month I will be celebrating my my thirty first anniversary at Microsoft. So I started when I was five years old. You all can do the math on on how old I am. But, <laughs> um, and my title is Director of Learning and Development, and I run the Engineering Learning and Insights team. And uh, we believe insights and being data informed is super important, and hence the name of our team. Um, organizationally, we serve all organizations in the company. Because I serve engineering, um, and our definition of engineering is not just the developers, people writing code, but any, anybody in the four technical professions that we have at Microsoft, there's engineering proper, there's a couple of hardware professions, and then research. So we're just about to pass 66,000 people worldwide. That is um, my audience, that's my customer, that's who I obsess about. And those uh, people, those technical roles sit in every single organization. Amy Hood, our finance lead, has a bunch of engineers in hers. Brad Smith, our, our president uh, and legal department, they have engineers in their organization. So I operate horizontally across the company and, uh, and that's a little bit about me. Thanks Great. for allowing Thanks. me to be here. Welcome to the panel. Uh, look forward to, to hearing about uh, your, your focus and priority with, with that interesting audience. Um, let's go to Karen. Karen Sanford, our, our host. Um, <laughs> thanks again for sponsorship here uh, in terms of uh, your offer to make space for us. And turns out it's virtual space. Uh, who'd, have, who'd have thought? Right. <clears throat> well, thank you, Chris, for that introduction. I just want to say how excited I am to be here today talking with all of you. And I really wish that we all could have gathered at the Redfin headquarters downtown. But we're leaving that calendar open for that date in the future when we're all able to meet together in person again. And I'll look forward to hosting you then. In the meantime, um, just as a brief introduction to myself, I've been involved in the field of learning and development for over 10 years, I mean 20 years in a variety of different roles. I've gone back and forth from higher education to corporate learning, um, working most recently before Redfin at the University of Washington where I led online learning and program development for our continuing and professional education as well as online for the rest of the university, the programs that we put on. And before that, I was Vice President of Training and Development at Safeco Insurance, where I had the opportunity to put together a corporate university there. 
Um, and beyond that, I also worked as a dean of undergraduate programs at City University. I did a short stint at an LMS company. So I kind of worked across the breadth of L&D during my career. In many ways, we could say that this time now of virtual learning is really what I have been working on all my career. So it's really, in a way, an exciting time for me. And I'm really also enjoying the opportunity to work with my team at Redfin in the programs that we support. So one of our primary focuses is our real estate brokerage. One of the things that I love about Redfin is that it's a combination of a high tech company, but also a people company. And I know we're gonna be talking more about um, soft skills, power skills, um, matched with the technical skills, and Redfin is a company that is so well positioned to do both of those things. So the kinds of programs that we do always have a mix. We, um, we're working across the organization in that we do new hire training for our business operations, our real estate operations, all of our agents, our managers, um, engineers, but at the same time, we really are focused on the kinds of initiatives that are driving business growth in the company. So sales training has been a huge emphasis this year at Redfin. We rolled out um, a big program at our company meeting in January. And as we're pivoting in this now all virtual world, um, in the past two weeks, my team redesigned all of our new hire training that was formerly done in person to a virtual classroom sessions. Um, I'm really excited that my team already has a lot of those skills and because we have a lot of online programs that there's a bit of bias real estate people really love to meet together. There yes. are a lot of extroverted people. Yes. They love coming together for that new hire training. So we're trying to replicate that in a virtual classroom environment. So um, thank you again for inviting me to the panel today. And I'm really excited to connect with anyone who wants to after this meeting today. Great. Thank you so much, Karen. And, and for anybody who doesn't know Redfin as an organization, it's a really interesting, innovative company in and of itself and uh, a really uh, fascinating place to do l and I'm sure. Um, let's go to TR. Uh, TR, um, wh why don't you introduce yourself, uh, talk a little bit about your job role and uh, your, your audience. That's great. Thanks, Chris. And good morning to everybody still on the West Coast. Good afternoon to everybody joining Eastward. I'm really excited to be here with everybody today and to learn from all of you, share a little bit of my insights uh, and perspective as well. Uh, I'm joining from Expedia Group at one of our newest offices at the south end of Lake Washington at my house, uh, like all of you. Uh, a lot of one-person one offices popping up around there, so around the world. Uh, my remit uh, with Expedia Group is through a recent uh, org transformation that we've gone through is leading all of our global learning programs. So. Uh, manager in leadership development, formerly lived within 19 different learning organizations across the company. We've now consolidated and brought uh, a lot of those uh, programs and the efforts uh, into a central uh, function that sits within our uh, people team uh, uh, group. So I lead that, that on uh, along with our learning technology and our onboarding program. So Karen, similar to you uh, and many other companies over the past few weeks, quickly snapping into this uh, virtual onboarding uh, experience globally with a lot of the, the dynamics and country requirements. Um, so we've shifted from learning to HR operations and legal uh, consultants in, in a lot of different locations. So uh, interested to talk and learn more about how everyone's adapting. Um, and so I'll let you carry on, Chris, and uh, we'll continue the discussion. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Tia. And uh, last but by no means least on the panel, uh, we have from Tableau, it's just a little small technology company here in Seattle, uh, Nate Vogel. Uh, Nate, why don't you introduce yourself, your job role and the kind of audiences that you work with? Yeah, sounds good. Uh, and of course, thanks for having me this morning and um, super honored. Can maybe first shout out, thank you, Brad, for Show, uh, maybe you could teach me how to make that screen on your computer. I actually thought that was a cool office space. So if, uh, if you can maybe coach me and train me on that. Uh, we uh, were supposed to be in President's Club last week for Tableau in Fiji. That mm -hmm. got canceled. So I, I wish I had like this beautiful, everyone that sees me is like, oh, we should be in Fiji. So they're so depressed. So maybe someone can help me figure out how to put some water behind me. 
Um, so yeah, super honor, been at Tableau seven and a half years. I was uh, actually ran a sales team for a publishing company for 25 plus years and was honored to um, you know, be recruited and hired um, at Tableau to help run training and development, you know, learning and development. So our audience is uh, uh, Tableau in general, full 5,000 or so employees. We help run the new hire. Uh, we call it boot camp, two week onboarding experience. And we just, for the first time in seven and a half years, went virtual. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, global. And so we, we definitely had some challenges and some things, uh, lessons learned I could surely share. Um, and then we also have, uh, I, I get the, the fun job of now working with Salesforce. So for most of you might know that Salesforce bought Tableau uh, this last year. And so part of my job and our team's job is now to collaborate with the, uh, they call it, you know, enablement folks at Salesforce and work with that audience, which is about 45,000 employees. And our mandate and is to really focus on their 8,000 core uh, what they call enterprise exec, ex, account executives. Um, so that's a new audience that we you know, haven't had in my um, seven and a half years at Tableau. So now working with Salesforce to teach and train Salesforce on Tableau, not yeah. only the product, but also the sales training. And then I have another audience, um, which is partners. So at Tableau, we work and scale with partners. And so we have thousands of partners globally selling Tableau. And so myself, along with about 70 of us uh, at Tableau, we get to wake up every single day and work uh, with our client, our customer, which is Tableau Sales. Our goal is to help them hit their number and exceed their number. Uh, and so when that happens, uh, we get credit uh, for you know, some of that. And if we miss the number, that's, that's also um, our responsibility. We take a lot of pride in that, uh, both if we hit or miss. Uh, honored to be here and, and, and also really super honored to be with this panelists and these great companies here uh, in the West Coast, especially at these times. One other important shout out for all parents out there. Warning, I might have an eight-year-old that should be upstairs studying, uh, but he's not listening. And I was raised by uh, a school, you know, mom, my mom was a school teacher, 40 years, special ed. You would think I would be able, and I do a lot of training at Tableau. I hopefully well-respected, but for some dang reason my eight-year-old is not listening so warning you might see him come down and interrupt this call and uh, that's what we're all learning right not only are we doing professionally but also at home yeah no awesome Nate thanks and uh, we, we're, we're happy to see any kids that pop up um, my wife uh, runs a school an administrator at a school and they've just moved 400 kids it's a it's the French American school here on, on Mercer Island and they've just pivoted in within four days last week to move 400 kids to homeschooling and uh, really an extraordinary effort uh, from everybody. And uh, gosh, does my heart go out to parents with young children right now. Uh, it's gonna be fun, it's gonna be fun. Um, what I wanted to do guys was, um, uh, was, was sort of get to the pressing issue here. Um, you've all, some of you alluded to, you know, the kind of programs you have and how you're having to pivot and move them online. Um, I, I, to me, I mean, just, just let's kind of dig a little bit deeper into that. To me, that's the elephant in the room is how do we operate? How do we add value as learning development professionals in a world where a lot of our tool, tools uh, uh, have gone away? I mean, a very, very important part of uh, L&D is forming communities and building culture. Uh, a lot of that happens, whether we like it or not, in face-to-face uh, activities, big sales events, uh, Nathan, like I'm sure you run. Um, but I'd love to know, um, just let's get to it. How has life, work life and business priorities changed over the last two weeks? How are you doing? And uh, what have you seen that's interesting uh, or innovative uh, in this very short period of time? Um, Karen, do you want to go first? You started to talk about that. Yes, well, I, I talked about how we had pivoted with our new hire training, but I think one of the things that's really fascinating is what we're doing as a business and then what we're trying to do as a training department to support our pivot in the business. Uh, in our company meeting this week, our CEO, Glenn Kelman, who has got a great big smile and a warm personality said, the future is here. So in many ways, Redfin has been already really trying to 
put forth a business model that we had been using in some instances that was a virtual business model where consumers could buy real estate directly from a company. But we were also developing a number of different technology tools that enabled our different, um, all of our different agents and ways that we sell real estate to use technology. Now they have the opportunity to do every sort of the way that they conducted business in a virtual mode. So one of the first things our company did was it created on our agent tools and on our website a way for us to do virtual tours. So, um, so our training organization is putting together a number of different virtual trainings over, that we're going to be offering over the, the next three months that is aligned with how our real estate brokerage has to operate in this new world. Because if you imagine, there's so many things that you could do in person before, and we still can meet in most of the states across the United States with customers in a home, but maybe it's gonna be limited to one or two people in the home. Yeah. But, but we used to do strategy sessions with customers afterwards. Now, most of those will probably be virtual strategy sessions. So we're creating training on all of these different topics, like how do you do an effective virtual strategy session? How do you do an effective home tour? We have Matterport that we can do virtual tours of homes. How do you do that most effectively? And then I think the other really fascinating thing that for all those of us who have been working in online for so long, is that written communication skills become so important. So some of our business leaders are quickly putting together communication training tools for agents so that they're able to do that more effectively too. Uh, Karen, it's a really fascinating story because uh, Redfin is really all about the digital transformation of this, this entire business marketplace, right? Uh, buying and selling houses. And yeah, I think you told me before, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a CEO who's quite a character, was actually really a kind of face-to-face -face training guy. He always wanted you to you know, get the people energy in your sessions. Um, has he changed his point of view now? <laughs> well, that is so ironic, I guess is the best way that I can say. We had developed what I think is an outstanding virtual training program for our managers. I have a very highly skilled ID team. And one of our instructional designers, who I think is on this call today, Andy Campbell, had designed a really high quality virtual training for our team managers. And our CEO was disappointed because he really wanted our team managers to come into headquarters and have this experience of meeting and interacting. So we developed a capstone for that that was going to be an in-person session. Um, and then, of course, as luck would have it, the week that we made the announcement, everyone telecommuting was the week of that pilot. So we're looking at now, how can we offer that in a virtual fashion? So yes, I think our CEO is recognizing that during this time, all the rules have changed and we're doing everything we can to do everything virtual at Redfin. Yeah, great. Well, well the best of luck at that. Uh, I think Mandela helping you out as well, which is great. Uh, and I really, um, I'm interested, I uh, hadn't really thought about this, about the importance of written communication and concise, effective written communication in these times. That's a really, really great point. Um, can I go to Chris? Uh, Chris, um, can you, you know, what's going down at Microsoft? Yeah. Uh, um, so, so many we, events. Yeah. So we got, we got the work from home call, uh, or, you know, sort of everyone who can, uh, just a little over two weeks ago on March 5th. And um, for my team, it was a really smooth transition because we, we already were set up to work flexibly um, in our team's site and the way our team operates. Um, so we didn't miss a beat. Uh, when everybody just was all, everyone was at home rather than an occasional person or two. Um, but obviously for the rest of the company, um, it's been a huge transition. Uh, just personally, um, the, this last Wednesday night, my wife and I talked and decided to sort of self-quarantine 100%. We'd been going to the store, trying not to hoard, but just try to prepare and so that we could stay home for two weeks if we had to. And, um, and so really choosing to literally not go out has been sort of a, it's not a huge change from how we'd been acting, but there really is this absolute nature of it and the reality of it setting in. And then as we tried to convince our 
older parents, both of my wife and I, they live here locally, not to go out because they're like, oh, we're being careful and yes. going out a ton. Um, you know, that's been a real challenge and an interesting dynamic going on. Uh, but generally doing good. At, at Microsoft, um, we, we immediately pivoted to try to provide resources for employees who may never have worked from home really just the basic one-on-one -on -one block and tackle. Yeah. And we created a work from home guide. And actually uh, just this week, Jared Spataro, uh, who's a CVP for um, Office, um, wrote a blog post about what we've learned um, in the last two weeks at Microsoft about working from home. I just posted a link to that blog post. And in the first section, share work from home guidance, there's a link to the, to the guide that I and a couple other people actually put together which was written in a way that uh, would allow other customers, it's a PowerPoint deck, um, to use and customize for their companies. But it includes um, a lot of the basics that really, if you go to any, anybody's website or um, blog post or thoughts, it's all the same, right? There's, there's some, just some basic things about setting boundaries at home, um, you know, uh, taking care of yourself, uh, you know, by taking breaks physically and eating well and uh, staying connected with people, so important. And so yeah. some of these tips are in there and uh, it was fun putting it together. I feel like I, I moved from unconscious incompetence to conscious incompetence now, right? So I'm kind of a mini expert on working from home having written the guide and I'm just hyper aware how I'm violating many of the principles of working from home while I was creating the work from home guide. So it was sort of an ironic experience for me. But as far as the training goes, um, just because, uh, and I, I can't go into too much detail about, I mean, I could, we don't have time, uh, about uh, kind of how I operate, but so much of what I do already is, is just online on demand. There's not very many in-person programs that my team runs, but there are other teams that locally in the business that run them. And so there's a task force that's been created to really try to put together best practices for how to design virtually. And they're tapping into knowledge and perspectives from outside Microsoft as well, uh, which is a newer sort of an approach that Microsoft's taking at the new Microsoft. Mm -hmm. And um, just to try to help uh, program owners who, who own and run in person, like our onboarding, our new employee onboarding, how do we convert that to virtual and what are best practices for facilitation for the attendees and trying to get that clarity uh, for, for ourselves. So what, what's happening, Chris, with things like events, I, I think tech ready, uh, which is a massive event for technical people in Microsoft where they all gather and, and uh, in, in Seattle and drive up the, the, the cost of a transatlantic flight uh, in, in January. Um, did, did tech ready happen this year? Are there, is there thinking about, you know, there's a lot of kind of event based readiness and training yeah. that goes on in the company. What's so the I'm not, on that? you know, Bob's team owns that Bob Jean, who's a, mm -hmm. an event owner here at Microsoft. Um, and so I'm not in the details of that. I've seen some guidance, which is it's, you know, cancel or postpone and or convert to virtual is the guidance. And so some things have been just outright canceled. Others have been postponed and they're frantically working to convert ones that they can to virtual. So I, on those, I don't specifically know the details, but I know that they're looking at those and they're taking it kind of on a week by week basis um, mm -hmm. and giving guidance for the next events over five weeks and just taking it real time as guidance uh, in our state where of course we're kind of a hotbed uh, where a lot of this stuff started in the U S as well as um, and guidance for other countries because we, we operate worldwide. Yeah. Um, well, well, thanks. And I, I just, I think a lot about uh, last night I was out for a walk in my neighborhood, which is the new, it's the new thing to do, right? You, you know, I've met people I haven't seen for years um, and, and kept at a distance, of course. Uh, and I took a photograph of the internet infrastructure at the end of my street. And I have a copy of it here, which I sort of praying to uh, because uh, people in companies like, uh, uh, Microsoft and the infrastructure companies. Um, uh, I never thought, I thought I'd say this, but um, you know, God bless Comcast. Uh, let's just hope uh, that that remains robust because it's almost impossible to imagine uh, this situation without that connectivity. Um, TR, how about uh, in Expedia, a travel company? Uh, been in the news a lot recently. Um, uh, uh, changing time, changeable times for you. Um, how, yeah. how are people doing? Yeah, so just to put it in context for everyone, over the past four months, we've relocated our corporate headquarters 
uh, from Bellevue over to Seattle and open up this gorgeous new campus. So that was significant change for our employee base. We then had a transition at the CEO and CEO, CFO uh, level simultaneously to roles mm-hmm. we still have not formally uh, filled. Um, we then went through an organizational uh, alignment uh, exercise um, and have um, a reduced workforce uh, that we've been working through and implementing. Uh, two and a half weeks ago, we were in a town hall uh, post uh, that exercise to re-engage the organization. In the middle of that town hall, we get the announcement from, I can't remember if it was King County or uh, the governor's office to now go into a recommended telecommuting scenario. And so in the middle of that meeting, we all disband and go home. And we are now um, at this point of change saturation. And yeah. uh, we've been spending so much time working with our organization on bringing leaders and our teams through this, the, the massive amount of change prior to COVID-19. Um, and the, the interesting shift and the challenge that, that we have uh, today is we, you know, we're all, whatever change curve you look at, if there's an end in sight, how do we bring an organization and individuals through to that end in sight that we believe to be where we're all, we're all going? The challenge now is what is that end? Uh, what is evolving? And, and it's less about the change curve and leading through times of uncertainty when mm-hmm. teams and leaders uh, don't necessarily have clarity on where this uh, situation is evolving. So our focus has really been uh, on supporting uh, leaders and managers' ability to, to be there for their teams in this uh, really uh, unpredictable time of turmoil for a lot of folks. Uh, I'm on the phone with uh, our partners across the world, and the anxiety is I don't have food on my table to give my family tonight because the stores were cleared at, my, at the bodega on my corner. And so how do we as a company support employees um, and the business? And the, the travel industry right now is being um, hit the hardest first. It will continue and hit other other sectors, but um, it's a, a really trying time for, for the organization and for all of us. And so learning's role and our communications uh, team's role in all of this um, has certainly evolved and heightened. Um, I think uh, one of the, if there's any silver lining here, uh, it's the forcing function that this scenario um, has, has um, created for us to make quick decisions around how we scale uh, solutions and interventions, um, the partnership between communications and learning to support the organization. This has forced us to do a lot of the things we've talked about, um, but simply have to pivot and implement. Um, so an acceleration of decision making uh, is the one benefit that we're seeing right now and the ability to gain scale uh, to impact all of our employees globally, the 60 plus countries where we find employees. Um, yeah, well, uh, Tia, obviously, um, you know, we're thinking of you and your entire crew and team. Um, you might just be a little ahead of us all in many respects. And, uh, you know, I'm a travel junkie, and uh, I think I've canceled like 11 trips this year. And um, uh, it's going to be, it's definitely going to be tough. Um, was there something, Tia, like, I, I, if I remember, you were actually in, with an airline company before. Um, yeah. Uh, is, is there something that you've seen? I, actually, what I took away from what you just said was aligning with the communications people uh, is a really important thing for L&D teams to do so that you're, you're, you're sort of conveying the, the, the critical messages. Um, is there anything else that you're seeing in your network or in your company go on that you, that you like uh, in terms of innovative ways to do our job? So in our partnership here, and what's really evolved um, as we were also on this journey around our learning culture and infusing learning agility throughout the organization, yeah. getting really clear on the role communications has and messaging in knowledge transfer. Um, we certainly learning has a role in transferring knowledge, but our, the partnership with communications to ensure knowledge is disseminated and then learning uh, being very clear on the skills required to then execute on the activities that the business uh, uh, is expecting and needs uh, to, to deliver the results. And so just that, that clarity of the distinction between knowledge and skills, communications, and learning has um, continued to crystallize for us in this moment in time and has been uh, a, 
certainly very valuable for us and given some stability where instability and uncertainty otherwise exists. Um, yeah, it's kind of yeah, yeah, carry on. Carry oh, Chris, on. I was just going to, if I could, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, go, go. I was just going to make a, a quick comment on communication, something that we've run into uh, uh, recently. And for the larger companies that have you know, many different audiences and maybe different learning teams, trying to come up with what's the guidance <clears throat> um, that we're trying to communicate. And um, you know, there's sort of, you want central aligned, you want a cohesion between the guidance that's being given and yet the, the uniqueness in different audiences and even different countries and locations is gonna be different based on local guidance and um, situations. And so it's really this tension between the alignment that you want and the autonomy, autonomy that you wanna give people, right? And if you over align, then it waters it down. It's not helpful for everybody. And if you over autonomize, then it's just, it's chaos, right? It's, there's no, there's no control, it's confusion. And so finding that balance of how do you, uh, how do you align, right, to these principles and then give people, empower people with the autonomy that are more locally that can then customize and express that, but still stick to the aligned pieces of what, whatever you're trying to communicate. That's something we're wrestling with right now, but I just wanted to share that because it's germane to the communication point. Certainly, I think that that is at the, the nexus of, of the challenge that we're facing is that, is that balance, um, so spot on. Uh, Nate, um, could you uh, talk a little bit about uh, what you're seeing? I mean, you've cancelled. We've all gone through the cancellation phase where everything cancels. Um, kind of what's next? How are you bootstrapping the next phase? What do you see that you like um, uh, in your organization? Yeah, a couple of things. And also thanks for everyone. A bunch of chats uh, on my last comment about uh, homeschooling. And so I've already got some best practices. Thank you. Uh, by the way, kids are welcome and animals. I got my dog sitting right next to me. I think our animals are happy or we're all working from home. So um, so thanks for everyone saying that. Um, I think how how is it going, how we're doing? I think it's already been said. Uh, maybe I'll have a little different context or spin on it. One, I'm just thankful to work at a technology company. I spent, you know, 20 years in publishing to me it was, you know, one reason why I got out was just so exciting to be here in Seattle and so many incredible companies like, you know, Microsoft, Redfin and Expedia, but also the incredible startups that are, you know, all over the place. So I just seven and a half years ago got out of publishing and into technology and I'm just very thankful. Uh, you know, the other panelists have said, and Tableau was the same way a couple weeks ago, we all got, you know, sent home and virtual and for our teams, many of us were already working virtually and know how to connect, you know, internationally and, but it's still uh, been a struggle, you know, you have the constant, um, just folks that aren't that good at it, they don't mute their phones or, you, you know, the drill, they don't know how to engage and, and we had to run boot camp, you know, virtually, so we had to train our you know, 50 some odd speakers and some you know, localization issues and uh, time zone issues. And so I just think content and, and just I like, kind of try to remind everyone, I'm just thankful. I'm thankful we work at a technology company. I'm also just thankful to be employed. Um, you know, we, we should all in all of our companies, we should continue to promote if we have if we're hiring, we should. I just met with a friend uh, two days ago. And by the way, you know, instead of coffee, tea, we just basically met up and he just lost his job. He's got two little kids and he just doesn't have enough money to pay the bills. So I was able to help out and I'm fortunate that I can. Um, and so I'm really, really honored to, and we should continue to, to just promote that we work at some companies that number one, we, we have jobs and we, you know, I think we'll, we'll weather the storm, but a lot of other companies can't. So if you, if you have, and there's lots of, l and professionals on here. So let's pass on if we're hiring. Like I know at Salesforce, I checked, checked this morning. Um, Salesforce has 1,927 roles open um, globally. At Tableau, we have 369 roles open. I have three on my team um, alone. Let's just continue to promote um, that our companies are hiring. And, 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 and um, that's kind of one thing, I, you know, you asked Chris, how is it going? I just kind of remind people that. I think yeah. our team has been in some ways appreciative. Now that we have to go virtual, we kind of try to, we miss each other. And so I think there's just context is everything. I think leadership matters. So I'm just checking in with people. Um, and I've got a couple of peers of mine um, on this. So they're gonna post a few things. So one, one thing I'm also thankful for, Tableau um, offers software for students for free. 
So if you have students in college or in high school or junior high, um, ask Emily, who's just a superstar uh, L&D person at, at um, Tableau. I think she, she knows many of you, um, worked at the Gates Foundation and also part of ATD. Mm -hmm. But just want to make sure you know Tableau is for free for students. And um, also uh, kind of second comment, Chris, so context and leadership matters. But also our technology can serve and help a lot of other companies out there. Uh, I was honored to be on the call with Mark Benioff, our CEO of Salesforce, and he was talking about, hey, you know, first focus on wellness, focus on meditation, focus if there's things you need to do personally. Uh, he, he mentioned family first, which I was very honored and very similar to Tableau and our leadership. Kind of just hearing that I thought was a really strong message. I had a new employee that just started um, last week. She got three kids, single mom. Man, that, I think those messages make a huge difference when you hear family first. Um, so just, I, I just think it's so important that our, if our companies can help other companies through this, we believe at Tableau, I always say, if you follow me on LinkedIn, long live data. Uh, it's not about Tableau. I think data will make the world a better place and data-driven decisions. And I've seen Tableau and we have on Tableau Public uh, a free site that people can see some of the things that we're doing with the, as, as we talked about earlier, the curve and the, the data around this incredible um, thing that our whole, whole world is, is struggling with. And I mean, and people are pinging me a ton. Hey, is this data source correct? Is this right? Is this, so this one thing that's beautiful about Tableau and a lot of our technology is that it, it helps people really understand and get insight and make, make better decisions with data. So if our companies can serve out there and many companies I think are gonna be struggling. Um, I think, you know, it's one of the things we said, I was in along with our sales leadership here at Tableau, go serve first, sell second. You know, go listen, go, go, go see what, what problems our companies are having. If not, just check in and don't sell. I, I think, you know, we'll get through this and, and Tableau will, you know, hopefully live, live another day. But most importantly, I, th I think our technologies is surely for these companies that are um, highlighted today. I'm, I'm honored to even be on this panel and I think it's context is everything. So it, Chris, that's what we're, we're doing a ton and readiness has the honor to, to speak to many of these folks internally at Tableau. And I think, I think the message is resonating, but it's just, unfortunately it's just starting. So I, th I think we've got a, a, a journey ahead and all of us got to work together. So also just, yeah. you know, maybe be just connect to our communities, right? This, just like we said, there's restaurants that are not, you know, so support them, do online, you know, do anything we can to, to support folks outside of, you know, our normal workspace. So I just think that's just something that um, I'm, I'm kind of trying to serve and lead by example there. Great, um, great, great points, Nate. I think uh, social responsible companies are so great to work for companies that are uh, having a, a better journey through the downturn so far can do a lot to help. We as individuals can do a lot to help starting from just feeding our friends to um, helping people find opportunities and stuff. And there is a ton of opportunity out there still, um, which, which is great to see. Um, I, uh, I, wanted to, um, I wanted to make sure that we had time to hear from everybody on the call, uh, but there's two more questions that I, uh, I wanna specifically ask. Um, this, this point of community, the value of community, the, the value of leaning in and helping each other and finding resource and finding jobs, frankly. Um, this is the kind of work that, uh, that Darren and Erin, who run this Learnapalooza community here in Seattle, uh, do so, so well. Um, they really have great energy. There, there is an event, I think, currently planned for the June timeframe, and I just wanted to ask Darren if he could uh, bring us up to date with what's going on with Learner Palooza, uh, the event, and, and what are the opportunities to uh, help uh, this wonderful community stay connected? Yeah, thanks, Chris. Uh, so, so like everybody, you know, Learner Palooza is uh, is thinking about what do we do uh, if we're all working remotely uh, in the June timeframe. So, as of right now, June nineteenth. We're still, we're still scheduled uh, to run our event. We're gonna make a call probably mid-April. We're gonna wait and see how things go, see if we, uh, if we you know, level off with this curve. Um, we have been talking to 
um, our venue, um, the Global uh, um, Innovation Exchange out in Bellevue, uh, right near here, here near Seattle, on what that would mean if we did shift, and they're they're uh, working with us on what that could look like. Um, do we shift to later in the summer or in the fall? So we won't we won't uh, cancel our event, but we will reschedule if necessary. Uh, by the way, for those of you, um, just as a couple of other side notes, um, um, uh, Elliot Macy. Um, started a, um, uh, a uh, um, well, what he's calling coronavirus learning project. So if you haven't signed up for it, it's a great online community. And one of the things that they're tracking is, is all the events that, are, that have been canceled or that are, are continuing on. So a lot of the, the events that are in that May, June, July timeframe haven't been canceled or rescheduled yet just because we know that things change. And so Learn of Lose is, is in that same category as, you know, we're kind of waiting and seeing. Um, we've talked to a lot of our sponsors as well. And one of the great things um, from our sponsors is that they're, they're pitching in to, to, uh, to do events like this. So Mandel is great and, and love that they're part of this community. Um, we've got um, uh, uh, Soapbox, Get Abstract. Um, geo teaming, they're all uh, lined up to do some events with us virtually. So in the next few weeks, you're going to see some some posts uh, from Learnapalooza um, through different channels that we'll do something probably not not quite like today. Uh, in that in that we've got we're talking about you know the you know what what are we doing from a remote workforce a little bit more on that learning. So I think that in the next few weeks, we're all gonna wanna say, hey, now that this is kind of our new new world for a little while anyways, is what does that look like from a, a learning perspective and how do we get better at these things? So uh, John Chen from uh, um, Geo Teaming is, is really anxious to talk about digital team building. Um, we've got um, uh, people from Degree that are talking about, you know, how do we utilize uh, a learning experience platform. So you'll hear from us and our sponsors on, on some uh, Zoom meetings, probably some Facebook Live events, but uh, really appreciate Mandel um, partnering with us on this and Chris, you leading uh, the charge to, to kind of get everybody prepped for what we're, what we're in for. Uh, uh, love hearing from the leadership. And then Mandel, I mean, some really great stuff on what we could be doing to make our programs better anyways, whether it's in person or virtually. So uh, turn it back over to you. But yes, we're, we're uh, still planning on the event. Um, and uh, um, if you haven't checked it out, learnapalooza.info is where you can find all the cool stuff that's going to be happening at the event. Uh, and we'll keep you posted. Great, thanks, Darren. Aaron, why don't you turn your video on so we can see you as well? You, you're one of the great leaders of that community. And say something to us. Um, I, there we go. <laughs> yeah, and I, I didn't get my uh, Learn Palooza background quite right, sorry. Um, thank you so much uh, for the support. You can teach Nate how to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Settings, and it even happens on the free version, I learned, because that's all I use, so. Um, uh, you get to see me in my my true element, which is a little bit funky <laughs> yeah. um, and, and technologically uh, less facile than I'd like to be. Um, no, the only thing I would add to all the great comments that we've heard, thank you so much to our panelists for sharing with candor and, you know, humility, what what they're going through and the advice that they have as we're we're all grappling with this is um, just to underscore the, the service first and um, practicing our, our, our Boeing v, VP is really good about talking about practicing a little bit of grace, you know, for everyone as we're trying to, to pivot. And, you know, I, I'm deeply aware of privilege as a, as a middle class white collar knowledge worker. And I'm hoping that um, just everything that we're learning and doing and supporting as learning professionals can help us get through this uh, COVID crisis, get through what evolution in L&D means in the corporate and even the home space now. And just thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you, Mandel, for helping this come together today. And if you wanna keep the conversation going, I think come June 19th, we're all going to have a lot to talk about and maybe we can do a massive retrospective on what we can do differently and better. So thanks. Yeah. Thanks for Great. letting me uh, chime in. Thanks, Aaron. I love your, your funky backdrop there. That works actually pretty well. Um, 
Yeah, not to put too fine a point on it, people, um, uh, providers and supporters of this community, the ones that uh, Darren named and, and our friends Mandel here, you know, these, these companies face a tough road, road ahead too. So if there's ways that you can incorporate their services in, in what you're doing, um, that's a great way to give back to the community and make sure that when we come out of this, we still have these great resources available to us. So um, that wasn't the purpose of this, but uh, it, it's, it's worth saying out loud, um, spend some money with training vendors and training technology vendors. Um, I wanted to uh, just open uh, it up for conversations from anybody um, on the call. And I uh, thank the panel and panel by all means uh, chime in, but I'd love to get people's uh, um, uh, comments on, 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 on great approaches, great, um, uh, great innovation that they're seeing at this time. Um, you, you simply just have to turn your video on and unmute yourself. And uh, I'd love to hear from you if you have questions for the panel or just something you want to get off your chest. And if you do have a question or a comment that you'd like to make online, um, we encourage you to use the hand up just so that we know that you have a comment or question to make. It just might make it easier as we work through everybody. Also, the chat is there if you'd like to post there as well. Well, people are working up the courage to jump in and ask a question or make a statement. I wanted to share a fun thing that my team did yesterday. We'd started doing these monthly lunches where we get together and, and play a game. Uh, a board game or something like that. And when we went all virtual, we said, well, how can we continue to do that? So yesterday we kind of experimented with playing Pictionary. Everybody was virtual and, he, and a person would share their screen and they'd bring up OneNote or PowerPoint, whatever, these are Microsoft apps, but and then they would draw the picture. And when there's a website that'll generate Pictionary words for you at different levels of difficulty. And so one team would pick the word and they'd private message it to the one person on the other team and then they'd have to draw. We had a fantastic time. The team said it was the most fun that they'd had, you know, the best meeting they had all month. And it was just a great way to connect and to have fun. And, um, and it was not hard. And so I think there's going to be creative ways like that, uh, even at home with your family, who might not all be in the same physical location. So I just wanted to share that. Chris, this is Nate. I love it. In fact, um, we were trying to connect more as a team. So we did, and I stole this idea for some of my great trainers doing boot camp. We did Throwback Thursday. So everyone on the team had a throw throwback on on Slack channel, a picture of them when they were kids. And it, it was so fun. And, and uh, you know, just being creative and also that not, it was a really nice human connection for the team. We had a lot of fun with it. And so we even every day we're trying to uh, at boot camp, we picked a theme, a sports th Wednesday, so people could share um, maybe their favorite sports team around the globe and why. And anyways, lo love your idea. I'm going to steal that. And hopefully maybe those uh, ideas we just shared might help help others. Hey, this is Eric Gerard. And I just wanted to say, let me turn on my camera. Uh, this has been excellent. Thank you very much. As, as far as a virtual event, this is probably one of the best I've been on so far. So uh, well done, everybody, for pulling this together. Well, it's our first one. So yeah, well, this <laughs> well, is not true for Mandel, but for me. <laughs> No, it's been it's been really good. And as somebody who's interested in in joining the Seattle LD community, I feel I feel really good about this. So thanks. Well, you're most welcome. Hi, this is Jules. Can you hear me? Yes, Jules. Hi, really grateful to be here. Um, and really grateful to see that you all found a way to make this happen. Not surprising given the source. Um, but Aaron actually asked a question earlier. Um, that I was curious about hearing an answer to, and it was, it was are you distributing decision-making capability as a way to accelerate in this time? So I'm just curious if anybody has any ideas there. Um, yeah. Tell us uh, quickly, Julie, um, uh, where, where, what kind of work do you do? Um, what's your I'm connection to the community? Yeah, I'm a leadership coach and organization development consultant. I'm on the local OD board and awesome. I've been a big fan of Aaron and Darren's work and saw you and a lot of others along the way. And yeah, just really, I admire many of you from afar and I'm really grateful to be here. Anybody can speak to distributed uh, decision-making? I see a next generation participant there in with TR. <laughs> I'll, I'll chime in here. Um, in terms of distributed decision-making, I think that a lot of that is about building effective teams 
And so one of the things we've been trying to do at Redfin is we have all of these really short term high priority projects is put together teams of people. I have a whole team of field trainers who have real specific expertise in how to deliver and engage with our agents in the field. We have instructional designers. So putting those teams together, and I really like to push that decision making out to the team to come up with recommendations um, because they do fantastic work. So I'm such a fan of distributed decision making at any point. And I think it's only through empowering people to be able to make those decisions. Do you allow your team members to grow and develop too? Thanks, Karen. Somebody likes apples to apples. That's a big favorite in our house. Or it was when the kids were growing up. Also in terms of virtual game night, I've been making up all kinds of games that are particular to virtual spaces. So we played apple to apples where we just called out a word and everybody had 60 to 90 seconds to go take a picture with their phone of something in their house that represents whatever that word is and then show it on the screen. So nice. there's a lot of ways. If ping me, I'll put my email in there. I've been working on many, many virtual games where the camera is the eyes and people have to create things. Anyway, it's a lot of fun. I love it. In the spirit of resources, um, there's a, a, a not-for-profit that I've done some work for called Playworks. And if you have kids at home, Playworks is an organization that does um, recess. They, they make recess a valuable activity in schools. And uh, I found out yesterday they're doing online virtual recess on uh, Facebook Live. So if you have kids that you need to get playing and active, uh, they're doing it at a couple of points during the day. Go check out playworks.com uh, and uh, look for their virtual recess. Brilliant, brilliant idea. And I heard that a school had actually held their graduation ceremony or some kind of ceremony virtually in Minecraft, where oh, all wow. the kids joined and they had their avatars and the, and the principal was there. They had a virtual event and it worked out really great. So people are being really creative. The next generation are going to have much more interesting virtual meetings um, uh, using tools like Minecraft. Um, Chris, I can say one thing too, just to, yeah. on answering the executive or dispersed leadership. So first, I think it's, it is important. And so, you know, asking teammates and, and so on to make decisions. The one thing I could surely relate, relate to here at Tableau, all our executives are available. I mean, they're not traveling. They're not on flights, you know, and by the way, Expedia and team promise I, as soon as we're, we, we are, I, I, I I travel 150,000 miles a year. I promise you we'll, we'll be going uh, and using travel industry. Um, I'm honored to say I'm almost at 4 million miles flown. So I, I hope I personally try to help support the travel hotel and, and travel, in, you know, flight industry. But I will say to you, and yes, I will use AAA and I'm a AAA member. So I'm, I'm with you, whoever just chatted that. Um, but boy, our executives are, ho they're home. They're, they're available. It's one of the, it actually has been surprising that how, if you want to connect with potentially executive, you could just quickly chat them or many of them are now online. And I know for my Tableau executives, they're always with customers or in meetings. So uh, just a little shout out, this might be a good opportunity to have some really good executive engagement and ask for that time to, to, to connect with them. So just a little shout out. You can even do throwback Thursday and have a little fun with them too. Um, I just wanted to give a quick shout out to Chris first of all, for organizing this event, but also for the great service he's done to our community with the podcast that he's been putting out over the past, I don't know how many months, learning is the new working. I know when I go out for my walks at night, I'm always listening to whatever the newest episode is. It is so well done. And I was kind of sad when I heard his latest one saying he wasn't sure whether it was relevant in these times or in the future. And I just wanted to say, Chris, that it's incredibly relevant and you've done such a fantastic job with it. So congratulations and I hope that you keep continue it because it's a great resource for our community. Thanks. Karen, you um, beat me to it. I was going to say the exact same thing. So I'm not going to repeat it, but just know we couldn't feel, um, yeah, more the same. I mean, it, it truly, um, and Chris has been a fantastic partner of Mandel's over the last couple of years and, and absolutely priceless and this event uh, to be included. So thank you so much, Chris. Sure Thanks. appreciate it. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah, I did have a little kind of like, uh, is what I'm doing even valuable kind of moment uh, earlier in the week. So we put out a little quick 10 minute podcast and 
um, of course, um, it's fun, but I have all these podcasts that I recorded before and without giving them some context, I wasn't sure that it would be the right thing to do, but uh, you could all help me by sharing stories and uh, names of people who were doing, responding to this crisis uh, in the learning and development context with uh, innovation and humility and um, uh, from a human perspective, that's the stories I'm looking for. Thanks. I'm going to wrap it up. Um, and we, you know, you can just tell me if you need more of these. Uh, but I thought I'd share something, uh, a resource, um, uh, which is a book that I read recently. My son is a, uh, he's a, a practitioner of improvisation, improv, like improv theatre, comedic improv. And he's at USC, and he's the head of the improv team. And I read this book by a guy called Robert Poynton. Um, and, and he looks at the sort of philosophical underpinnings of improv, how to, you know, what are the rules that make it work and make it funny? And they really apply to corporate and working life. I mean, in, in amazing kind of ways. And one of the rules of improv is that everything is a gift. Whenever somebody puts you in a situation in, in, in an improv scene, and they, they create, they set up a situation and they put, they hand over to you and put you kind of in the spotlight. It's critical that you accept what they give you as a gift. It doesn't work if you say, no, 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 no. It's not a chicken. It's a bucket, right? You have to take the chicken and you have to do something with it and you have to hand a gift to somebody else. And uh, one of the ideas that Robert Poynton uh, looks at is, is, how to make everything a gift. And so we're all in tough situations to varying degrees. Um, we all find ourselves operating in ways that we hadn't planned. Um, and the question is, how do we make that situation a gift? How do we have a mindset where that's giving us opportunities to do things that we couldn't do before? Um, this meeting was a gift. Um, thanks, Mandel. Thanks, Redfin. Thanks, panelists, Chris, TR. Um, and Nate and Karen, fantastic. Thanks everyone for giving us a little bit of time uh, and a little uh, slice on your screen, uh, which I'm sure is a busy screen. Um, yeah, let's figure out how to do improv online. That's what I'm gonna get my kid to do when he finally gets home this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks people, take good care of yourself. Um, Have a and, great weekend. Uh, stay in touch. Thanks everyone. Thank you, Chris. Thank, Thank you, Redfin. All. Thank you to our leader panel. Yay. Great job, everybody. Good work. Take care.